I don't know if I mentioned it in my review of Death Note, but I do love how every time we get a concert of a show based on a manga, they print the program Japanese style. So it's it's backwards for us. I just I just think it's neat. I I just that was my ticket. I just think it's neat. <laughs> After the success of Death Note last year, they have brought over another anime-based musical, written by Frank Wildhorn, this time going in a very different direction and bringing over Your Lion April, a musical based on the manga and the eventual anime of the same name. A very popular romance manga, this story is as heartwarming as it is tragic. And the more human and down-to-earth nature of it seemingly makes it an easier adaptation than something like Death Note. But does it manage to stick the landing? Let's find out. But if you haven't seen my face before, hi, I'm Elliot. I talk about theatre. I am the most chaotic theatre person on the internet. I do reviews, I do discussions, I do video essays, and if any of that sounds interesting to you, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It helps me out helps the channel. But let's dive into Your Lion April. Now, first of all, let me give my perspective on all of this, because I think it's important uh, when you're talking about an adaptation to kind of show where you're coming in from. I am watching this from the perspective that a lot of newer people are going to be watching this from. I have not seen the anime. I don't know much about it. This is my first experience of this story. But from little bits of research and from what I can see, this does seem to be an easier adaptation than Death Note before it. Death Note was adapting, like, <laughs> so much content. It was adapting the entire storyline of Light and L from that anime. That's multiple seasons worth of content that you're cramming in to a two-hour musical. Whereas this is adapting only a single season of an anime. That's still a lot to condense, but it's easier. And what's more, there's not a lot of explaining that it needs to do with uh, some supernatural concepts that may be unfamiliar to a Western audience. It's a very down-to-earth story about a boy who loses his mother. And with that tragedy, he is struggling to get back into his passion of music because he can no longer hear it. But when his friends introduce him to a violin playing girl, will she reignite his passion for music? Even from this, it sounds like a perfect show to make into a musical. It already has such a strong musical element embedded into that plot line. And I will say, I think this musical is successful at portraying this story on stage and making it easy to follow, even if you don't know the anime. It's easy to follow. There's a lot of heart. It really sells a lot of the tragedy of it and carries a lot of weight through how it tells this story. I feel like even from someone who hasn't watched the anime, I can tell there's areas in here where they've had to trim it down and there's a lot of nuance that feels like it's missing from here. I also feel like it's weird with some of its choices that it leaves in. And I wonder if some of the focus could have been used better. For example, there is one of the main four. For example, there is a scene where the football captain, one of the main friends, Watari, is playing in this big game. There's a song dedicated to it. There's a whole moment where he kind of fails this football game. It's a nice character moment for him because you get to see him really struggle with something, really trying to process the emotions of failing and failing at something he knows that he's good at. But this scene kind of is it. That's it for this character level. There's nothing else that builds onto it. And because of that, it ends up feeling a little bit pointless. It, feel, it feels like it's something that if I go and watch the anime, this would have a lot more built on it. And there's more time to explore this and to explore his character and really get into the depths of how this affects him. But with a musical that's only got about two hours, it doesn't really manage to flesh this moment out. And it feels like a remnant of the original story that is here because it's there and isn't really built on because of the stuff that's cut. But I think on the whole, this show does manage to really connect to its audience, retelling this really tragic story of love and loss and the pain that can come from both. 
I think it's really clever. It's so cleverly done. And a really interesting exploration of grief and loss and how much this can affect you and bring you to your lowest point and how hard it can be to pull yourself out of that. I feel like all of these traits to the story make it really universal and make it a strong choice for adaptation to the stage as well. These traits about this story make it so layered and interesting and maybe it could be more maybe they could push it further with their choices and adaptation but even so this end product what we currently have manages to provide a really heartfelt story slowly giving you the hints slowly showing you what's going to happen and still managing to rip your heart out when it does it's just such a human story. Now, let's talk about the main structure of this, the concert staging of it. Like Death Note and Bonnie and Clyde before it, this is a very staged concert. <laughs> a lot more staged than stood, let's say that. Always with these concerts that are becoming more and more popular in London, it's kind of a gamble whether you're going to end up with a fully staged one or one that's just sung into mics. You never really know. <laughs> but seeing as this is being directed by Nick Winston, who previously worked on Death Note and Bonnie and Clyde before, and both of those productions being very heavily staged, it was a strong presumption that this was also going to follow suit. I think this concert staging does a great job at giving a little taste, a little teaser of the potential of this show. And when I say this, I mean it. And I feel like this concert misses out on a couple of things that in a full production could be really beautiful. I think something about this anime that even from an outside perspective, I can tell you is how beautiful this animation style is. It's full of color and life and it's so vibrant that I feel like in a concert staging you can't really capture. They try, they have this one little piece of projection at the back which they use to give you a little taster in some of the scenes and these are really nice, they're vibrant, they're bright, they match the anime style really well. They give you a little taster of it but obviously in a stage production, you can go a lot further with that. But knowing that they're borrowing the stage from Frozen, so everything kind of has to be covered up in black for a while, it can't really go to the full heights. There's little tasters of it there, and with the cherry blossom tree, which is a really nice addition to the stage. I quite like the staging of this as well. We have a lot of different levels of this set, which is fairly simple, but adds a nice dynamic and different levels to the staging. And the centerpiece being this big grand piano, keeping the focus of this story mainly on music, with the band in full view behind as well. A nice blend between the staged and the concert, making both very visually important on stage. Something I will say about this concert that I'm going to forgive, but if this show does go further, I really want to make sure that this doesn't happen this way. In this concert, Kosei performs live. We have an actor, a performer who can play the piano, but Kauri does not. She instead just has a bow and during the main scenes where she's playing, they shine a light on the violinist. I'm conflicted on this for two reasons. Number one, I think this does put a lot of emphasis on the band, which in a concert works quite well. A concert is there and mainly designed to be a showcase of the music, so to allow it to showcase the music is a strong feat. But I'm not a massive fan of this because it feels like we're losing a little bit of the story through the necessities of the actual production. Because Rumi Sutton can't play the violin, it has to go to someone in the band. But it's very obvious that Rumi Sutton can't play the violin because when she is playing and it's shining a light at the back on the violinist, they are completely out of sync. She more so does it to what she's singing. It's not something that I'm going to go on and on about or ruins the show completely, especially because, look, it's a stage concert. 
Rumi Sutton was not learning the violin in a week. We're not, we're not expecting that. But I feel like it's something that within the staging could have been neatened up to make this idea work a little bit stronger. Honestly, this show does the violin really dirty. All of these like trained musicians who are meant to be like really competitive are all touching the strings of their own violin bows, which even I, as someone who does not play the violin, knows that is an absolute no. <laughs> I will also say there are great use of props in here. I love the lockers that come out, a really simple idea that adds a little bit of depth to that stage. And there's a use of one prop that was hilarious, but I'm not sure that was the intended impact on the audience, which is when two of the characters come out on bikes, but instead of having actual bikes, they just have the handles of a bike, which pleased the audience very much. <laughs> And to the actor's credit, they sold the silliness and the, and the comedy of such a strange prop. <laughs> I'm going to do something I don't normally do, because I want to speak about the potential of this show a little bit. I feel like with a lot of these concert stagings, they're a taster. They're a first step. They're trying to prove that audiences want these shows in London and gather producers and investors to put their money forward for a full production. And I think the thing with this concert is that you can see that potential so well. So I want to speak about where I want the show to go. I would really love to see a version of this done fairly intimately. That doesn't mean that it needs to go into the smallest of smallest theatres, but really strip it down. Have a smaller ensemble focus really heavily on these main four characters. Because I think what is so good about this story is that contrast between this tragic, small-scale story of a couple of friends going through something hard and the way that music helps that. The soaring, how big these themes are, and the importance of that to tell the story. I think in a smaller theatre space, somewhere like the Arts, the Ambassadors, even the Garrick, this type of musical could really work well to engage a more intimate story and a more intimate feeling to this musical. I think Death Note is going to be one that needs the scale, needs the, needs the money, needs the flashy costumes and everything, but this... This doesn't need much. I think that there is so much potential within this show for something truly beautiful, a really simple but effective staging. And this concert is a great little taste of what we could get. Now, let's talk a little bit about the music. Music is a massive part of Your Lion April. It's embedded into that story. And I feel like this production is nice with its music. I do wish, part of me wishes it focused a little bit more on classical music. There's parts embedded there, but it feels like a more general music theatre score. But that's not to say there isn't standouts. There's a fantastic number that Rachel Claire Chan gets called Where's My Superhero? A lovely ballad that really allows that moment you need to get that context for her character and really allows you to feel for her. I love the opening number of I Can't Hear the Music and the way that this theme is embedded throughout the show. Perfectly introducing you to the grief that Kosei feels. But I think the most impressive moment in this show, the piece that I really found myself attaching to, is not even a musical number. Towards the end of Act 2, we get a solo number from Kosei where he is playing the piano and he's practicing his number for this competition. And it is spectacular. Just this classical music that soars, building up and coming down and flowing. It is so impressive and such a strong moment within this show. And I think that's the power that this show has. You're dealing with these characters who are suffering through really human things and music is the way to express that. I feel like there are elements of this musical that could go further into that feeling. And I think it's very telling that the most impactful, the most engaging moment in this show is that solo that it is just allowing the music front and center 
to tell the emotion of this story. And finally, let's talk about this concert cast. Zhang Ziyong plays Kosei, a fantastic betrayal that really dives into the complexities of what Kosei is feeling. He's a character plagued by this tragedy that is completely taking over him. He's got such a heavy weight on his shoulders that Yong portrays with such care and delicacy. I love this slow burn through this musical where you really get to see how much Kari changes him and molds him for the better. And I really enjoy how it isn't quick. It takes its time. It's not just a sudden thing where he suddenly knows how to play the piano again. It, it, it's a journey for him. And Young's performance sells that so well, really carrying such weight through these really tense moments in the show. Rumi Sutton plays Carrie, a name that I feel like I'm desperately mispronouncing, but I, I've, I've looked on Google and I can't find the pronunciation anywhere. The ones that I can find are rated like two out of five, so I'm not trusting those. <laughs> Sutton is another character who you get to see a lot of complexities of. She's really bubbly and sweet and instantly has such a warming presence. And as you see her deal with her struggles for this show and the secret that she's keeping, these layers start to form that Sutton dives into wonderfully. I love her performance in songs like Perfect that really bring you into this character and her mindset. I love our two side characters in this friend group, Rachel Claire Chang as Subaki and Dean John Wilson as Watery. Obviously with a condensed version of this story, these characters don't get as many moments to really dive into their psyches. But I like how this story starts them both off feeling like stereotypical and slowly gives you a wider sense of what they're like. Their care for their other friends and what they're keeping secret. Obviously, as I mentioned, this musical doesn't really have the time to flesh out the moment where Watery loses the football game. But through Wilson's performance, you really get to see how much this moment affects him. And the way he's trying to hide that. Rachel Claire Chan gives a lot of depth to her character storyline. This love that she feels that she knows is not going to be reciprocated. And I think she gets a standout song of this show, Where's My Superhero, which she performs perfectly. And finally, there's Joanna Ampil, who plays Kosei's mother. A character, again, who doesn't really get a lot of time to be fleshed out in this version of the show. But I really appreciate her stern portrayal of this character and the contrast to her more loving moments, really allowing her to feel like a real person, a complicated person. Your Lion April in Concert delivered a great showcase of what this show can be. A heartwarming and heartbreaking exploration of tragedy and grief and how we can overcome this. It's so human and I think it connects so well to audiences even beyond Japan. It's a very accessible story, I feel. And I think there is so much potential for it to really connect to a Western audience. But what do you think? Have you seen this musical? Have you seen the anime or read the manga it's based on? Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments down below. If you did enjoy this video, please consider hitting like and subscribe. It really helps me. It helps out the channel. Here's some links to some other videos on screen right now and a link to my Instagram. If you want to drop me a follow over there. But that's it for me today and I hope to see you next time. Bye.